Hello my friends. I'm going to take you through a little update and a walking tour of the uh, greenhouse, aquaponics greenhouse. And uh, this is the middle of March. Um, the greenhouse has been up and operating since October. So about four to five months operating time. And uh, some things that I learned in the build, some mistakes that I've done and made corrections. <clears throat> okay, first of all, this area here, I had uh, beans growing at one point and they extended up to the very top of the greenhouse. They were doing very well. Well, they matured and they were pulled out and then I planted the same beans over here <clears throat> and uh, they extended half the distance. Uh, I think it was due to the very little limited light that we had through uh, December and January and February. Uh, we have hardly any sunshine here. Today is a nice sunny day. <clears throat> now these beans, they are, have already reached maturity and what I have just done today is I cut the roots, pulled the roots out, and I'm gonna let these dry and then harvest these beans. These are the antique or heirloom Amish beans that I've been growing. Uh, in addition to that, I planted what's called Christmas limas. And these are doing very well. I would think with sunlight, they would have done a lot better but they produce a real nice lima bean. Here they are right here. Very good size, colored. And uh, I just started collecting those. And these are still growing pretty well. And there's a lot of beans on these. Uh, some of the vegetation that have been doing well, some haven't. Uh, here is a cabbage, it's just starting to head. That's doing well now. Um, the floating raft beds, I just planted lettuce. Uh, the lettuce that was in there and Swiss chard that was all harvested. Here's a little bit of older, more mature lettuce. Right in here, these are just coming on. Uh, zucchini. Um, I had a large devastation of everything in here from what someone told me were aphids. I'm not the greatest of gardeners in the world, but I think I know what aphids look like. These weren't aphids. Um, what they were is fungus gnats. And before I identified what they were and figured out an organic uh, solution, treatment, uh, they devastated my tomato plants and I'll go and show what I have left. Um, I started new plants. Uh, I like starting tomatoes in the floating raft. They root, seem to root very quickly. There's some there that I just put cuttings in. But right here is a tomato that I just planted from the raft bed. That was a cutting. Uh, it's starting to really shoot up right now. As we go down here, some things uh, seem to root real or grow real well in low light. Other items were just stagnant. Um, I like to start a lot of my seeds this method here with the net pots and I save any plastic containers I can find and that keeps the net pots or the net uh, rock wool cubes keeps them uh, pretty moist and then I do start a lot of things under here in flats normal method just because there's lots of space okay radishes uh, they did pretty well uh, probably won't see a lot of real mature because I've been eating everything. The radishes are doing well. Beans do very good in low light. These are new ones that were just planted. These are going to be the uh, black beans. They're real long. The seed, the bean itself is a black, black bean. 
onions do well in the winter. Um, this is uh, celery that I planted. This was uh, plants that were cut completely off, planted in there and rerooted. And I've been cutting the outer leaves all winter, using it for soups. Uh, peppers, they seem to do well. Um, they're just starting to come on. I found a kohlrabi. There's one that I missed. I don't know how I missed that one. But all the other that were that size I've already eaten. Unbelievably tender. Very sweet and tender. Um, one thing that is taking over in the winter, you see right here, this is mint. And this is one bed of mint. And they grow so good that Right there, they come, they're come. they coming down to the ground, growing underneath the uh, grow beds. You can see back in there. The mint I take to uh, the local restaurant and brewery, and they use it for uh, mixed drinks and garnishing their dishes. I'm munching. Uh, call it raw, be back in there. Here's broccoli plants. I don't know if you can gauge size from here. They seem to be doing, uh, growing pretty vigorously, but uh, I don't see heads on them coming out yet. Right here is a tomato that was devastated. Uh, the plant was about six foot tall. I cut it down and it's throwing up new shoots. This is all from the fungus gnat devastation that I had. There's another tomato that's been cut. The other plant that does extremely well, these are nasturtiums. They're growing out into the uh, walkway. The blossoms, I'm picking both blossoms and leaves. The blossoms uh, I take, also take to the restaurant and they garnish their salads with them. They uh, have a real slight sweet flavor, but a pretty strong peppery aftertaste. Okay, these were my tomatoes again, and cut down, you see right here, just cut down to the bare stalks, and they're starting to grow new shoots. That had tomatoes back there, all these were tomato plants, and they all were reaching just about to the top of the greenhouse, pushing seven, eight foot long. The uh, composting tower, I've been using it all year. Tomatoes, these were very little guys that were put in in the fall. Um, they're showing real good growth. The uh, bin itself, uh, I've been filling it up almost every day and it's been breaking down, so it's working well. The towers, uh, the strawberries, some are starting to come out pretty good. You can see here, uh, that, that's pretty healthy. What I found is if they're too wet, now you can see over here a lot of this fungus, these were leaking. No, that's not fungus, that's algae, a lot of algae leaking. And uh, uh, they had a lot of fungus gnats living on them. So they were pretty they were hit pretty hard there. But the other ones they're coming back. They're doing well. You can see here the green plants, the leaves look pretty healthy. Um, and the system that I was using with uh, the straw, I abandoned that totally. I just went and cleaned out all the tubes that had straw in them and replanted their plants and then it's i'm sure it's going to be a little shock for them for a while um, you can see the leftover uh, fly tapes uh, when the gnats were real strong in here or large numbers that would be dotted completely solid with them uh, my solution to get rid of the the fungus gnats was to saturate everything, the soil, the plants, uh, any dirt that would be around 
with parasitic nematodes and they did their job real quick uh, within about a week's time there was almost no gnats seen. I still see a few gnats flying here and there but and I still keep a, a spray bottle with the uh, parasitic nematodes in them and uh, continuously check on those. Uh, but I have lots of ladybugs in here. I ordered ladybugs and uh, they are doing well. They're breeding. You can see the pupa and the larva. So they're laying their eggs and doing their trick. Now this is uh, this is my uh, uh, I'm being distracted. This is my nasturtiums again and uh, this is growing in a tower and I see one, two back in there, two towers extremely dense doing real well and this is all extremely low light level for our winters so this is a plant that's doing real good I do have watercress growing and through the winter it just set back and right now it's just uh, starting to uh, throw up new growth and you can see right here um, I'm very spider friendly in here they do a lot of work there's a lot of the good guys that with the uh, parasitic nematodes and the ladybugs beets do real well in here I've been eating the tops for maybe a month or two I see some of the gnats flying right there and uh, I haven't picked any of the, the roots yet. There's one right there. That looks like it could be picked. But sometimes the uh, tops are better to be eating than cutting the root off and not having any more tops. You can see here the tomatoes. They were hit hard. This one wasn't come cut back, but it's starting to uh, throw a lot of new growth up. This is garlic. You can see the front half here. It's pretty void the back is healthy. This front section here was loaded with the uh, fungus gnats and once they were knocked out now you can see new growth coming back. More mint. A lot of this stuff is being shaded with the uh, Christmas limas. And you can see back in here. I don't have all the towers up yet. There's going to be uh, over a hundred towers when I'm completely done but uh, that's a cabbage growing in in the tower so with the uh, what I did today was I removed the uh, straw out of the existing towers that had them there's probably about a dozen of them and the other thing that I did is with my, we're going to go into the fish house, <clears throat> with my filters, they're doing their, its job. Uh, I daily drain off sediment from this valve. And then every week to two weeks, I'll clean the bird netting from this one. This is the small. Uh, particle filter. This here is a, just a divider to force the water to push to the bottom of the tank before it comes back up to hopefully make the bird netting work a little bit better and it does a pretty good job but I what I added to this when I would clean that netting I would take the entire tank and empty it and dump all the water into my grow beds and it was always pretty dirty with the uh, fish poo. So to help drain this tank I put in a, a uh, valve to drain right into a, a tub. Now this valve for the swirl filter because the center has a funnel shape at the bottom it's coming out from the underside. I'm going to shift the camera underneath. Okay, it's coming 
from the bottom. I don't know if that's even focusing. And it, then it drains to here. This one doesn't have a funnel shape at the bottom of the tank, so I just plugged in to the side, drain it that way. I can get most of the liquid out uh, using that. I don't know how, how much you zoomed in on this. Backing up. There we go. That helps. So one last view, the raft beds, center section filled with the towers, walkway being overgrown with what likes the low light levels. And uh, it's nice seeing that that nasturtium is in flowers now. And the first side here doesn't look like a lot of growth, but I harvested and removed a lot of things, cucumbers, uh, beans and uh, things have been planted to get this side going. And uh, now that we've been getting some sunshine, I'm seeing a lot of new growth coming about. Well, that's the extent of this update, four to five month review of my aquaponics tour. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.